Hey there, welcome to chapter two of this series where I walk you through the ins and outs of screencasting. In this video, we'll be covering the softwares available to you. Let's start with recording software and what Sean and I use in our videos. Sean uses Open Broadcaster software, also known as OBS. It's a free software used for video recording and live streaming. A common place you will hear people using this software is on Twitch or YouTube live stream. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. There are a lot of features on OBS which can be useful, but it can also get very overwhelming. But once you get a hang of the basics, it's a powerhouse. For my tutorials, I use Camtasia. It's a two-in-one screen recorder and video editor. It is, however, though, not free, and it goes for $249. I'd also like to quickly point out that if you only want the record option, the same company sells another software called Snagit that's only $50. Moving on. I would suggest you take advantage of the educational discount if that's available to you. The software itself is quite easy to use and pick up. I'd say it's definitely a no-thrills editing and recording software. Once your screencast is recorded with Camtasia, it gets directly imported into the video editing software. Some other options for screen recording is to use QuickTime Player if you're on a Mac. It's free and comes with every Mac device. If you simply go to the menu bar and click on File, you'll see an option for a new screen recording. Then at that point you can just select what part of your screen you want to record. For those on a Windows machine, if you don't want to use OBS, you can use Camp Studio. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be focusing on OBS and Camtasia. Next, we're going to talk about editing programs. Sean and I both use Adobe Premiere Pro. I believe there's a free trial, and Sean will put a link in the description box below. As far as alternatives, I mentioned you can edit in Camtasia. Free software is like iMovie for Mac or DaVinci Resolve for Windows also works. The features in all these programs are mainly the same, but if you are using a different one than we are discussing, you just want to find out where all the tools are, but I still suggest you learn Adobe Premiere Pro. It's definitely worth it and we'll cover the basics of it in the coming chapters. In the next chapter, I'll cover the best practices for recording audio. I'll see you there.